What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Unsolved Enigma. You got your boy Aaron and my beautiful wife Nicole. Hi. Um, before we get started, though, we want we want to address. We got a trigger warning for y'all. Um, today's case involves some pretty awful stuff, and it's about a child. And we just wanted to put a trigger warning on here because it gets pretty graphic, and um, it was kind of hard to even research. So, just be advised. Today's case that we're going over takes place in St. Louis, Missouri, and it's about uh, Little Jane Doe, or they also called her Hope. Um, her body was discovered on February 28, 1983, and it was found that she died three to five days prior to her body being discovered. The cause of death was homicide by strangulation, and they estimated that she was between 8 and 11 years old, and she mm. was a black female. And her height was uh, between 4'10 to 5'6", and her weight was between 61 to 70 pounds. And these are all estimates that we'll get into in a little bit of why they're only estimates. Um, in an anthropological exam, they discovered that she had spina bifida occulta to sacrum. That but means that uh, the anthropologists, they had to like study her bones and stuff. Yeah, and there, but she didn't have any outward symptoms of the spina bifida. Oh, yeah. But they could tell that she had it. So two men, um, I guess they were scrap. They were like picking scraps and stuff. They were going through all the abandoned, the abandoned houses out there and stuff. And they were going through this house. And they went down into the furnace room in the basement in a vacant apartment building. Um, and it was on Clements Avenue in St. Louis. And the building has since been torn down. Um, and they, as they were picking and they were looking for it, I believe one of them ended up uh, using this lighter to light a cigarette. And as he did that, he ended up seeing, that's when he discovered um, Young Hope, as what I'm, is what I'm going to call her. And she was um, wearing a yellow V-neck sweater that was stained with blood. Her pants and underwear were removed, and she had her hands tied behind her back with a red and white nylon rope. So the two guys that were looking for the scrap metal that came across her um, called and reported it to the police. The police came out. Um, unfortunately, she was raped and strangled. Her head was removed. I wonder if they got in trouble. I doubt it. No, I'm saying not. No, all right. Like when they go, when people, a lot of people break into houses, like stuff like that, like abandoned houses. Remember what your mom was doing? Um, appraisals. No, appraisals and stuff. Yeah. And the people yeah. break into the house and they'll still like the, the air conditioner. There's a lot of copper piping and stuff yeah. like that. That's what I was wondering. I wonder if they still got charged with it, even though they found a the body. Probably not. Uh, I think they had more important things to worry about. Mm-hmm. So, she was raped and strangled. Her head was removed with a large bladed knife after she was killed. Um, and there was mold growing on her neck where she had been decapitated. So, that's why um, the height and the weight were estimate, like estimated because she was missing her entire head. And with that being said, there was no way for them to do facial reconstruction to possibly identify her. And there were no dental records. So it was impossible for them to know who she was, how old she was, or anything like that. Um, her head was never found, and she they do believe that she was killed elsewhere and brought to the building because there was a, a total lack of blood pooling around yeah, her. Yeah, especially for somebody who's losing their head. They think that she was killed elsewhere and that her body was brought to the vacant apartment building and dumped there. Um, there wasn't any signs on her body of previous abuse, like being beaten or anything like that, um, prior to this occurrence. Wrong place, wrong time. So, um, Joe Berger, Joe Bergun and Herb, Herb Riley were the homicide detectives originally assigned to the case. Um, they initially thought that it was a prostitute until the body was then, um, examined thoroughly, I guess by medical, medical examiners. And that's when they realized it was a young girl. So there were traces of blood on the wall leading to the basements and indicating that she had been carried down into the room. Um, they were unable to, of course, unable to get dental records, of course, because the head was gone. Um, they couldn't do facial reconstruction. Um, any type of like, um, you know, nowadays they could take, um, they could try to like build it, build it up. Like they do like yeah, the old like mummies with the and bone stuff. Yeah, like, and stuff. Well, like the mummies and stuff like that and try to, and like a, give like an estimate of it. They couldn't do like anything like that. Like. Yeah. Of course, because the technology wasn't there back in the day. And then the head was still to this day never recovered. 
So the St. Louis police have been investigating this case since 1983, and they've never had any clear leads. Um, detectives looked for, to psychics for help, which we thought was kind of weird. Um, because from what we understand, they usually write psychics off as being crazy. Oh, no, no offense yeah. to anybody that's a psychic, just from stuff that we've looked into. Um, so they had a group of psychics that performed a seance, and they had, um, <laughs> they had photographs Sorry. of her fingerprints, um, and they passed it around. And all of the psychics came to the conclusion that her head would be found on a boat in the Gulf of Mexico. So the call, the Coast Guard was contacted. Um, and, and nothing came about Yeah, nothing came yeah. of it. Okay, now Hope was assumed to be from out of state because no school records um, indicated that any kid was missing. Um, there was no missing child reports anywhere within that area or nearby towns or cities around there or nearby state due to the non like there were no missing reports of a child the, they thought that the parents might have killed the child since nobody had reported the child being missing and as there was a nationwide coverage there's never anything turned up from that and then the case went cold and then eventually her body was buried at washington park cemetery in berkeley missouri in december of 1983 so, in 1993, investigators mailed her bloodstained sweater and rope, like the actual evidence, mailed it to a psychic in Florida. Bruh, these cases with these cops, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> they, I mailed, swear, yo. they mailed evidence to a psychic in Florida for analysis. You mail it, and you mail it to somebody who's not even a, a Yeah, not even an officer of the law. You know what I mean? Not even a forensic a just forensic a expert or nothing. You know what I mean? Or just a regular old Joe Schmo. Oh, I might know something. You know what I mean? And then the evidence got lost in the mail. So pretty much of course. the only... Just like everything else that happened right now with the USPS. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not started. shaming them. You know what I mean? But... <laughs> the, so the evidence was lost in the mail. They have obviously... Of course it says Florida too. <laughs> <laughs> they have no backups because this is the actual evidence. So the bloodstained sweater is gone. The rope is gone. So if they were to want to run any trace evidence, can't do it now. And in June of 2013, investigators exhumed her remains. So they did an advanced forensic testing of her bones, which suggested that she was possibly from a southern state like the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Texas, Louisiana, or Tennessee. How the hell is Tennessee one of the southern states? It's right next to Virginia, Virginia. It's next to Virginia, but it's not southern. And it's nowhere near water except for rivers and stuff. Yeah, but it's <laughs> it's drinking water is what they're analyzing for. Okay, I got you. Um. So after that... That makes sense. After they exhumed her and did the forensic testing... Um, she was reburied in Calvary Cemetery in St. Louis, Missouri, where the plot is regularly maintained. Um, the, the list of suspects in this case was very short. And by short, one stood out, um, Mr. Vernon Brown. He was convicted of molesting a 12-year-old girl in Indiana and spent four years in prison, which I don't know why on earth they would get people like that only four years. I'm not about to get into that. But a 12-year-old girl in Indiana, uh, by like I said, a 12-year-old girl in Indiana, and he spent four years in prison. So after he got out, a nine-year-old by the name of Kimberly Kimmel disappeared. And then they found her raped and strangled to death in the home of his grandmother. But there wasn't enough evidence to convict him. So he ended up um, moving out due to there wasn't enough solid evidence and stuff. He moved out of state, and then he changed his name. And he was living with his wife and stepkids. So, the home that belonged to his grandmother was vacant. She wasn't living there, but still, it's tied to him. Yeah. And when he relocated, he relocated to St. Louis. So, on October... So, where did all these take place? St. Louis. The first ones took place in Indiana. So, on October 24th, 1986, Vernon lured Janet Perkins, who was a nine-year-old student at Cole Lured, you know we saw that. <laughs> A nine-year-old student at Cole Elementary to his home. Um, his stepchildren saw her, but then he sent them to their rooms and locked their doors from the outside. So his stepchildren saw her, but he sent them to their rooms and locked their doors from the outside because he's a total creep. So he then bound her feet and hands with a wire coat hanger and strangled her to death. 
and then continue to go back upstairs and carry on the rest of the day like ain't shit happened. Mind you, like he didn't just lock his stepkids yeah, in the room. Mind you, somebody. mind you, the stepkids heard the heard the little girl screaming and everything from the vents. From there, I guess through the vents or some way somehow. But he ended up just nonchalantly, and then I guess he put the body in two trash bags, and I guess he had time to separate the body. He ended up putting the body in two trash bags, and then the police ended up finding it behind his house in the alley. In the alley. So he was questioned and ended up mm. confessing to the murder. Um, he confessed to another murder from the year prior where a 19 year old girl was strangled and stabbed multiple times. Yeah. So he had a pretty, a pretty consistent pattern with this stuff. So they figured, all right, he's probably good for little Jane Doe's case too. So he was visited many times by a homicide detective in prison, um, trying to get it out of him, see if he was tied to more murders. If I he- believe this was the new detective that took yeah. over the case because the old one either retired or passed, passed away. away so the case was ended up handing over to him so the detective that was new that newly got it that was newly assigned the case due to the old one passing over he um everybody was telling him about it when he was assigned the case and stuff so he took special interest in it and he kept going down asking them questions about it and i guess the mr vernon brown he denied doing had any any doing with this case yeah he never bullshit he never confessed to anything other than the two that he had prior confessed to um i mean he he wouldn't have anything oh he would didn't have anything that i mean he wouldn't have anything to lose you know what i mean yeah but some people that he was already going he was already set to be what executed so yeah but there's a lot of killers that hold that shit in um always because it's their way to maintain control over the situation okay so he ended up being executed. She's a psychological person. I'm not. <laughs> he ended up being executed uh, by lethal injection in 2005. So if he did do it, nobody will ever know. Little Jane Doe's identity remains unknown to this day. Her head was never found. Her remains were never identified. Um, and her murderer or murderers remain unknown as well. Um, no arrests have ever been made in this case. And it is still open. Honestly, at this point, it's unlikely that it will be solved. I think Mm. this will end up being a cold case. Um, One of those ones that don't. There's no, there's no evidence left. I mean, maybe somebody in the area will come forth and say something from back in then. I mean, it's over 20 some years ago. So I doubt anybody would really remember as that much. And also I feel like it would be hard for them. It's over 30 years. Excuse me. (laughs) I also feel like it would be hard for them to corroborate anything because a, her head is was never found. The building is B, gone. And all the evidence is gone because they mailed it to some psychic in Florida. So they don't have anything. Yeah, to go they don't on. have no no physical evidence. So unfortunately, this will probably remain a cold case. Um, let now, us... one of my theories is I think Vernon Brown did do it. Um, I do too. He just fits that character build, and I mean, and he. He preyed on little girls, and then him going, when he moved with his wife and all that, he changed his name. That right there was a trigger for me. You know what I mean? Well, of course, all the other shit he did before was well, a yeah. trigger, but, I mean, he changed his name, and then all the, then he was all in the, the other, same town. Same it's everything. Now. It had the body was found behind his house. You know what I mean? He's still in the same area. Like, I don't believe in coincidences. He took that girl down to the basement. Little Jane Doe was found in the basement. It's just... Bleh. So let us know what you think down below. If you think Vernon did it, or if you think it was somebody else, and just a random killing. Um, if this video was interesting to you, give us a like and a subscribe, and <laughs> and comment. We read all of our comments and respond. If yeah, if y'all got any ideas and stuff, definitely shoot those down there. We'll respond back to y'all. We take requests. So yeah. Thank y'all for checking this out again. I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all y'all's weeks and stuff like that. Y'all definitely see us again. Um, soon we're gonna be starting to post two videos a week, so y'all get ready to see our faces a lot more. So feel free to click through all of our videos, and we will be posting more frequently. So we will see y'all next time. Bye. Here.